Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. I love the first snowfall of the year. It is so nice to sit inside and watch the snow lightly falling and see how it covers everything up and makes it look white and new. We've had a few snowfalls recently, and everything looks so pretty to me. But for the family in this story, snow is not such a happy thing. Christmas Under the Snow It was just before Christmas, and Mr. Barnes was starting out for the nearest village. The family were out at the door to see him start and give him the last charges. Don't forget the Christmas dinner, Papa, said Willie. Especially the chickens for the pie, put in Nora. And the waisins, piped up little Tot, standing on tiptoe to give Papa a goodbye kiss. I hate to have you go, George, said Mrs. Barnes anxiously. It looks to me like a storm. Oh, I guess it won't be much, said Mr. Barnes lightly. And the youngsters must have their Christmas dinner, you know. Well, said Mrs. Barnes, remember this, George. If there is a bad storm, don't try to come back. Stay in the village till it is over. We can get along alone for a few days, can't we, Willie? Turning to the boy who was giving the last touches to the harness of old Tim, the horse. Oh, yes, Papa, I can take care of Mama, said Willie earnestly. And get up the Christmas dinner out of nothing? asked Papa, smiling. I don't know, said Willie, hesitating, as he remembered the proposed dinner, in which he felt a deep interest. What could you do for the chicken pie? went on Papa with a roguish look in his eye. Or the plum pudding? Or the waisins? broke in Tot anxiously. Tot has set her heart on the raisins, said Papa tossing the small girl up higher than his head and dropping her all laughing on the doorstep. And Tot shall have them, sure, if Papa can find them. Now goodbye, all. Willie, remember to take care of Mama, and I depend on you to get up a Christmas dinner if I don't get back. Now, dear, don't worry, were his last words as the faithful old horse started down the road. Mrs. Barnes turned one more glance to the west, where a low, heavy bank of clouds was slowly rising, and went into the little house to attend to her morning duties. Willie, she said when they were all in the snug little log cabin in which they lived. I'm sure there's going to be a storm, and it may be snow. You had better prepare enough wood for two or three days. Nora will help bring it in. Me too, said grave little Tot. Yes, Tot may help too, said Mama. This simple little house was a busy place, and soon everyone was hard at work. It was late in the afternoon before the pile of wood which had been steadily growing all day was high enough to satisfy Willie. For now there was no doubt about the coming storm, and it would probably bring snow. No one could guess how much in that country of heavy storms. 
I wish the village was not so far off, so that Papa could get back tonight, said Willie, as he came in with his last load. Mrs. Barnes glanced out of the window. Broad, scattering snowflakes were silently falling. The advanced guard, she felt them to be, of a numerous host. So do I, she replied anxiously, or that he did not have to come over that dreadful prairie where it is so easy to get lost. But old Tim knows the way even in the dark, said Willie proudly. I believe Tim knows more than some folks. No doubt he does about the way home, said Mama, and we won't worry about Papa, but have our supper and go to bed. That'll make the time seem short. The meal was soon eaten and cleared away. The fire carefully covered up on the hearth and the whole little family quietly in bed. Then the storm, which had been making ready all day, came down upon them in earnest. The bleak wind howled around the corners. The white flakes by millions and millions came with it and hurled themselves upon that house. In fact, that poor little cabin, alone on the wide prairie, seemed to be the object of their sport. They sifted through the cracks in the walls, around the windows, and under the door, and made pretty little drifts on the floor. They piled up against it outside, covered the steps, and then the door, and then the windows, and then the roof, and at last buried it completely out of sight under the soft, white mass. And all the time, the mother and her three children lay snugly covered up in their beds, fast asleep, and knew nothing about it. The night passed and morning came, but no light broke through the windows of the cabin. Mrs. Barnes woke at the usual time, but finding it still dark and perfectly quiet outside, she concluded that the storm was over, and with a sigh of relief, turned over to sleep again. About eight o'clock, however, she could sleep no more, and became wide awake enough to think the darkness strange. At that moment, the clock struck, and the truth flashed over her. Being buried under snow is no uncommon thing on the wide prairies, and since they had wood and cornmeal in plenty, she would not have been much alarmed if her husband had been home but snow, deep enough to bury them, must cover up all landmarks, and she knew her husband would not rest till he had found them. To get lost on the trackless prairie was very easy, and to be lost almost in sight of home was no unusual thing, and was her one fear in living there. A few moments she lay quiet in bed to calm herself and get control of her own anxieties before she spoke to the children. Willie, 
she said at last. Are you awake? Yes, Mama, said Willie. I've been awake ever so long. Isn't it almost morning? Willie, said the mother quietly, we mustn't be frightened, but I think, I'm afraid, we are snowed in. Willie bounded to his feet and ran to the door. Don't open it, said Mama hastily. The snow may fall in. Light a candle and look out the window. In a moment, the flickering ray of the candle fell upon the window. Willie drew back the curtain. Snow was tightly banked up against it to the top. Why, Mama, he exclaimed, so we are. And how can Papa find us? And what shall we do? We must do the best we can, said Mama, in a voice which she tried to make steady. And trust that it isn't very deep, and that Tim and Papa will find us and dig us out. By this time, the little girls were awake and inclined to be very much frightened. But Mama was calm now, and Willie was brave and hopeful. They all dressed, and Willie started the fire. The smoke refused to rise, but puffed out into the room and Mrs. Barnes knew that if the chimney was closed, they would have some problems cooking food and staying warm. The smoke in a few minutes was choking them, and seeing that something must be done, she put the two girls, well wrapped in blankets, into the shed outside the back door, closed the door to keep out the smoke, and then went with Willie to the low attic, where a scuttle door opened onto the roof. We must try, she said, to get it open without letting in too much snow and see if we can manage to clear the chimney. I can reach the chimney from the scuttle with a shovel, said Willie. I often have with a stick. After much labor and several small avalanches of snow, the scuttle was open far enough for Willie to stand on the top rung of the short ladder and beat a hole through to the light, which was only a foot above. He then shoveled off the top of the chimney, which was ornamented with a big round cushion of snow. And then, by beating and shoveling, he was able to clear the door, which he opened wide, and Mrs. Barnes came up on the ladder to look out. Dreary indeed was the scene. Nothing but snow, as far as the eye could reach, and flakes still falling, though lightly. The storm was evidently almost over, but the sky was gray and overcast. They closed the door, went down, and soon had a fire, hoping that the smoke would guide somebody to them. Breakfast was taken by candlelight. Dinner, in time, in the same way and supper passed with no sound from the outside world. Many times Willie and Mama went to the scuttle door to see if anyone was in sight, but not a shadow broke the broad expanse of white over which toward night the sun shone. Of course, there were no signs of the roads, for through such deep snow, none could be broken. 
and until the sun and frost should form a crust on top, there was little hope of their being reached. The second morning broke, and Willie hurried up to his post of lookout for the first thing. No person was in sight, but he found a light crust on the snow, and the first thing he noticed was a few birds trying in vain to pick up something to eat. They looked weak and almost exhausted, and a thought struck Willie. It was hard to keep up the courage of the little household. Nora had openly lamented that tonight was Christmas Eve and no Christmas dinner to be had. Tot had grown very tearful about her waisins, and Mrs. Barnes, though she tried to keep up heart, had become very pale and silent. Willie, though he felt unbounded faith in Papa, and especially in Tim, found it hard to suppress his own complaints when he remembered that Christmas would probably be passed in the same dismal way, with concern for Papa adding to their own misery. The wood, too, was getting low, and Mama dared not let the fire go out, as that was their only sign of their existence to anybody. And though she did not speak of it, Willie knew, too, that they had not many candles. And in two days at the most, they would be left in the dark. The thought that struck Willie pleased him greatly, and he was sure it would cheer up the rest. He made his plans and went to work to carry them out without saying anything about it. He brought out of a corner of the attic an old box trap he had used in the summer to catch birds, set it carefully on the snow, and scattered crumbs of cornbread to attract the birds. In half an hour, he went up again and found to his delight he had caught bigger game, a poor rabbit, which had come from no one knows where over the crust to find food. This gave Willie a new idea, and he took him out of the trap and set it again. The next catch was a couple of snowbirds. These Willie carefully placed in a corner of the attic using the trap for a cage and giving them plenty of water and food. When the girls were fast asleep with tears on their cheeks for the dreadful Christmas they were going to have, Willie told Mama about his plans. Mama was pale and weak with anxiety, and his news first made her laugh and then cry. But after a few moments giving to her long pent-up tears, she felt much better and entered into his plans heartily. The two birds up in the attic were to be Christmas presents to the girls. As for plum pudding, of course that couldn't be thought of. But don't you think, Mama, said Willie eagerly, that you could make some sort of cake out of meal? And wouldn't hickory nuts be good in it? You know I have some left up in the attic, and I might crack them softly up there. And don't you think they would be good? He concluded anxiously. Well, perhaps so, said Mama, anxious to please him and help him in his generous plan. I can try if I only had some eggs. But 
Seems to me I have heard that snow beaten into cake would make it light. And there's snow enough, I'm sure, she added with a faint smile. The first Willie had seen for three days. The smile alone he felt to be a great achievement, and he crept carefully up the ladder, cracked the nuts to the last one, brought them down, and Mama got the meat out, which was to be their Christmas dinner. Wish you Merry Christmas, he called out to Nora and Tot when they woke. See what Santa Claus has brought you? Before they had time to remember what a sorry Christmas it was to be, they received their presents. A live bird for each. A bird that was never to be kept in a cage, but fly about the house till summer came, and then to go away if it wished. Pets were scarce on the prairie, and the girls were delighted. Nothing Papa could have brought them would have given them so much happiness. They thought no more of the dinner, but hurried to dress themselves and feed the birds, which were quite tame. But after a while, they saw preparations for dinner too. Mama made a crust and lined a deep dish and put in the dish all the things she had. And then she tucked them all under a thick crust and set it down in a tin oven before the fire to bake. And that was not all. She got out some more cornmeal and made a batter and put in some sugar and something else which she slipped in from a bowl and which looked in the batter something like raisins. And at the last moment, Willie brought her a cup of snow, and she hastily beat it into the cake or pudding, whichever you might call it, while the children laughed at the idea of making a cake out of snow. This went into the same oven, and pretty soon it rose up light and showed a beautiful brown crust, while the pie was steaming through little fork holes on top and sending out the most delicious odors. At the last minute, when the table was set and everything ready to come out, Willie ran up to look out the scuttle as he had every hour of daylight since they were buried. In a moment, came a wild shout down the ladder. They're coming! Hooray for old Tim! Mama rushed up and looked out and saw, to be sure, old Tim slowly coming along over the crust, drawing after him a wood sled on which were two men. It's Papa! shouted Willie, waving his arms to attract their attention. Willie! came back over the snow in tones of agony. Is that you? Are you well? All well, shouted Willie, and just going to have our Christmas dinner. Dinner? echoed Papa, who was now nearer. Where is the house, then? Oh, down here, said Willie, under the snow. But we are all right, only we mustn't let the plum pudding spoil. Looking into the attic, Willie found that Mama had fainted away. And this news brought to her aid Papa and the other man, who proved to be a good friend who had come to help. Tim was tied to the chimney, whose thread of smoke had guided them home, and all went down into the dark room. Mrs. Barnes soon recovered, and while Willie dished up the smoking dinner, 
stories were told on both sides. Mr. Barnes had been trying to get through the snow and to find them all the time. But until last night had made a stiff crust, he had been unable to do so. Then Mrs. Barnes told her story, winding up with the account of Willie's Christmas dinner. And if it hadn't been for his keeping up our hearts, I don't know what would have become of us, she said at last. Well, my son, said Papa, you did take care of Mama and get up a dinner out of nothing, sure enough. And now we'll eat the dinner, which I am sure is delicious. So it proved to be even the cake or pudding which Tot christened Snow Pudding, was voted very nice, and the hickory nuts as good as raisins. When they had finished, Mr. Barnes brought in his packages, gave Tot and the rest some sure enough raisins, and added his Christmas presents to Willie's. But though all were overjoyed, nothing was quite so nice in their eyes as the two birds. After dinner, the two men and Willie dug out passages from the doors, through the snow, which had wasted a good deal, uncovered the windows, and made a slanting way to his sled for old Tim. Then, for two or three days, Willie made tunnels and little rooms under the snow. And for two weeks, while the snow lasted, Nora and Tot had fine times in the little snow playhouses. And that's the end of this episode. Good night, sleep tight.